Hi everybody, peace, light, and love. So, I'm here in this place. Um, it's always a question whether to go to the synagogue on Saturday or not. But I feel so lonely after I leave the synagogue because people are there talking to God and I just, they, isn't anybody interested in talking to me? I think God can be found through people. So that's my view. And I think it's ridiculous that people spend so much time looking at a book and talking to an invisible creature when there are visible creatures all around us, dogs to love, people, etc., etc. Um, so lately I've had a change of mind about going to the synagogue. And philosophically, it doesn't make sense either. And I do need my coffee. I think if they served coffee in synagogues, I'd go there. I'd even go to a mosque if they serve coffee. Uh -huh. My animals are really nice. Today I wanted to go on a trip. It was my birthday yesterday and I didn't ended up not doing anything special. I'm going to bed feeling really happy. But then I woke up happy because there's always sun here. So besides it being considered the Holy Land, I think Zionism did very well for Jews because so many of us have problems anyway for our genetic shit because I don't know what it is but there's a lot of genetics uh, that can lead to mood disorders and sunshine is really important for people that have a tendency to feel melancholic. Maybe they will produce books like Kafka but they will not live long and maybe you could do both. So I've been listening to transgender movies. I did meet, meet one transgender and I became fascinated with it. And I, so many times I want to scream to them, don't do it, don't do it, don't do the stupid surgery. Just be who you are. And one Saturday I went to the Artist Association. There was this amazing transgender person called, what is it called? Roy Victoria Chefetz. And you can watch her on my other YouTube, which I can't access now, called Seagull B. And I uploaded the videos. So interesting how this person chose not to undergo surgery, but still be transgender. And there's so, something so feminine about this person. The hair, the aura, the energy. And I think you don't really have to undergo surgery for anything on this your life is in danger. When they say, oh, I will kill myself if I don't become a woman or a man, I think it's absurd. Another important thing is having children. And they really deny pleasing society, but what is it not but pleasing society? I mean, I just really, for me, transgenders are exactly people that are trying to please society because they don't feel inside what they are outside. So rather than being a weird person, like a man who's feminine or a woman who's masculine, they wear makeup as women, dress as women, but they're never gonna be women and they know it too. They just are feminine males or masculine females. Because it's true, you cannot change. And then they deny it and, they, and then they say transphobic and whatever, but reality is, they cannot have babies. Now I heard yesterday there was an uproar on one of the channels by this guy. You can have a uterus transplant. So a man can actually have babies in a way. But you know, what's the difference between that and a homosexual male getting a woman to have a baby for him and his partner? I don't know. I mean, it's all artificial, isn't it? It's all needing doctors. When you can do it the natural way, um, in a discreet way, you know? So I don't understand that. I mean, Oscar Wilde, one of my heroes, he was homosexual and then he had three kids and there's nothing wrong with that for him. So why is there a problem for people? Why can't, why do they see having children in the natural way is something that's not normal for them and then therefore, who pay a hundred thousand dollars for a procedure in America or because India and Nepal has banned this procedure for homosexuals or 
why is it my business? I don't know because I'm I don't I'm not gay. I'm not anything. But I'm a person who's always struggled to please society. I'll tell you why. I was always told, shut up, shut up, shut up. We don't want to hear what you have to say. You're irritating your rich aunt who doesn't have, you know, anyone to leave the money for. We need her money, so shut up, stop, stop clashing with her. And I clashed with her and I didn't inherit her money. But I stayed with my dignity and my truth. And I love my dogs and it's more important for me than anything else. Because this is the truth I have, being me. And so people that please other people inherit money because they're pleasers or able to manipulate. That's their choices in life. So when I watch transgenders, I really feel bad for them because they do so much effort to, ple to look and they deny it. No, no, I'm not doing it to please society. I'm really a man or I'm really a woman. But biologically, you're not. You cannot have anything a man can have, including um, sensation. So what, what's the point, actually? And when I looked, there was a transgender in this film, Oi Chepet's made, who undergone surgery, and you see that, and it's, it doesn't look right, you know? It looks like an inflated doll or something. I, it's not that I'm against transgenders, I'm just thinking, I'm against pleasing society for any reason. You feel like wearing makeup, you feel like dressing like a woman and you're a man, do it, go ahead. But, do you really need expensive surgery? To make you feel like a woman, then you, sh then you really are not a woman. Because if you really are a woman inside, you don't need anything. It's, it's your emotions that count. I don't really feel identified with any gender, to be honest. Oh, maybe I'm nine binary, is that good? I never felt female because female people around me were irritating and nasty and maybe I'm like that too, but nagging and too obsessed with catching a man or whatever and I, sadly at one point I became, I played that role for a while. I'm just not interested in being a typical female and I'm not interested in being a male either. I'm not interested in any of the gender issues at all. I really love my dogs, and it's not an issue for me. I think when you're a young people person and you have hormones, aging, and I don't know, but if you're like a man and you're attracted to men, why do you have to look like a woman to be attracted to men? I mean, can't you just be gay? No, it's more than that. You don't understand. They tell me I had a transgender bash me. I'm really tired of not being able to tell my truth and my thoughts without being bashed. Um, Shosha, lo, 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 Shelby, Shelby, Shelby Boyana. Okay, I think we're going to stop now. Shelby, Shelby, Shelby. Okay, I'm going to stop now because, uh, yeah, one of the nastiest ladies in town just came in. She's elderly. She's a horrible person. I talked to her one time, and some people age gracefully, but she's really, I don't want to say that. My dog went to her. Wait. I have to get my dog. I don't want to be mean, but some people really, they get a long life, but they're me. She said to me, I remember what she said to me, because people, you know, I don't want to focus on that, but she's really a negative old lady, and she's like, she's going to say negative things, and sometimes you wonder why God gives a long life to people that are nasty. Now she's getting up and leaving. She's going to complain also, make a mean comment. It's like you've got an old age, try to be nice. No, she's not going to be nice. She's going to complain about everything. And uh, this is not good, and this is not good, and this is not good. And I remember it was like the high holidays or something, and she bragged how she has all these kids nearby, and oh, you're not near your kids, and like. I'm so sick of these simple-minded idiots that think just because they're old they can complain and whatever. I like elderly people a lot. I even work with them actually sometimes, but 
There's one woman I have who complains, and I understand where it's coming from because she's frustrated from not being able to do things she could when she was young. However, she said things to me that I didn't like. She said that I don't take care of myself, that I look neglected. So I went to the hair dressing school because I can't really, I don't have a budget for a fancy schmancy haircut from what she pays me. And I thought, wow, it's like my mother came alive. This is the sort of thing my mom used to say to me, you know, get a lipstick, do this, do that. But my mom took care of herself and she was a nice lady. So one of the downsides to being in a um, not expensive coffee shop is it attracts a lot of uh, people that are not very high class. But it's very important to sift out these people. Most people are not worth your time. A lot of times I, I like to talk to strangers and then the reaction is so nasty. Maybe it's because I'm really not part of this society and I wanted to talk about transgenders and also people that don't feel they fit in. So I traveled, I lived in two different countries and I never felt I fit in. And I have a dysphoria from this country. I don't feel like belong anywhere. And the funny thing is they told my son, I was told about my son, oh, if he doesn't go to the Israeli army, he'll never fit into the society. Screw society, who needs to fit in society? Does anybody say thank you for your army service? I, I did the army service. I was even, I even had an accident and went back. I served my country. Uh, I was a patriot. And do you think my country takes care of me in old age? No, it doesn't. I still have to work very hard in order to survive here in this expensive country that gives out money for spoiled American kids to come here to see Israel because maybe their rich parents will come here. Zionism has become a horrible thing according to Netanyahu and his gang and I don't know if the other ones are better but I hope my country is going to change and I'm here to make a change but I'm not gonna make this change unless I make a change and myself first. So take care of yourself, people, and be happy.